we continue with the sports call, remember to join us tonight, by the way, after the late news for the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. On the program tonight, we have Ron Cook, Chris Muller, and Tim Benz. We'll get into a lot of topics, including Andrew McCutcheon. And if you would like to uh, sound off on that, please feel free to do so right here at 412-575-2600. Let's begin with Steve in Johnstown. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Hey, Bob, how you doing? Uh, I just want to talk, talk about the uh, decline in the NFL ratings. Mm-hmm. Well, thinking, first of all, it's, it's been in decline the last couple of years, so uh, this continues to be what has become somewhat of a trend, which there are a lot of reasons for, but go ahead. Yeah, well, what, what I think is, and I think the consensus is that, okay, first, of course, you have the Thursday night games, which are oversaturating the market. So you have the Thursday night football, and then you got the college on Friday and Saturday, and then you got the full lineup on Sunday, and then they're talking about moving – Moving uh, the Super Bowl, maybe eventually have a Super Bowl in in in, uh, in Europe or in England. And I think, I think what it is, you're you're, you're saturating the market, right? And then you got the decline in uh, <laughs> in all these pregame shows all week long, you know, all over TV. That you know, before you used to have a half hour pregame on Sunday, and that was it. Now you have all this pregame all week, and everybody's everybody has fatigue at the end of the week. Uh, and I, I think, agree. I think that's one of the big things. It's oversaturation of the product. You could find it everywhere at every time. I mean, just look, and this goes to college, too. Um, although I think there's some good marquee college games on Saturday. But, Steve, when you watch it, uh, you, you'll notice on every single channel, sports channel, you got a game. And it goes on and on and on. And it's hard to determine which is a real important game and which isn't a real important game because there's so many of them. And absolutely. I think, I think absolutely, when you're a consumer... Bob. You just don't know where to go, and you figure, okay, well, there's too many to watch. I'll, I'll find some highlights later, whatever the case may be. I mean, you're talking saturation of the market. I mean, you start putting – I think I think a contraction. Some of these some of these teams need to be contracted. You've got too, you got too much oversaturation, and, like, you take San Diego in, in a soccer field, you can't even fill up half of the seats. I mean, I mean not like half, but the good bit of the seats are – you watch on TV, they're empty. There's nobody in those seats, and it's only 20,000 seats. Arena, temporary arena they have, uh, stadium right now. It's kind of, yeah. I well, mean, uh, yeah. it is a concern, and the league is definitely looking into it. And there, like I said, it goes beyond just the saturation, but that's a big one to start with. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Joe in Oakmont. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Hey, Bob, how are you? All right, thanks for calling. Good. Um, I, I got to tell you, with Cincinnati and uh, Baltimore losing today, I really think the Steelers have this division wrapped up. I think if they can play to their potential, they're going to go seven and one down the stretch, including a win over the Patriots. Uh, I'm just so what would be your only loss? Might, what would be your only yeah. loss? Uh, a game like against Tennessee or Houston. Like one of those games they should win, they'll lose. And I, they I think it might teams. be Cincinnati. They just seem to struggle sometimes playing in you know Cincinnati. What? When, they, when they go to Cincinnati, that, come, that becomes a house of horrors for the Bengals. I mean, that's the stadium that Cincinnati built, but Big Ben owns it. You know what I mean? Yeah, he owns a lot so, of the ones in Ohio. Yes, he does. But I, I just think uh, the Steelers, this is, this is, if, this, if there's any year for them to get the number one seed, it has to be this year. Yeah, and I tweeted out, I think this might be interesting, that we may see an all-Pennsylvania Super Bowl. You know, I think it was 2004 that we came very close to that, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. But yeah, that would be cool. Know, um, you, you know, you Carson, Wentz is, Carson Wentz has been unbelievably good so far. And that team is loaded. They're very good. So who knows? Maybe this will be the year that happens. Be a good game. All right, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Let's go out to line three, Joe McKee's Rocks. Hey, Joe, what's up? Hi, Bob. Thanks, but uh, two things. I'd like to see a little more pass rush. There's mm-hmm. a three-man rush. just don't work. And uh, the second is I love watching the uh, World Series, and I, and I rooted for Houston, but I realized with the ownership we got, that would never be us. Thanks. That's what I want to say. Well, I mean, you know, they did it the old-fashioned way. Houston broke it down. They brought in uh, high draft picks because they were so bad, and they made them all count. You know, George Springer was 11th overall. Uh, they got Bregman, who was their starting third baseman, second overall. Correa was first overall. These are all picks that you have to hit on, and they hit on every single one of them. Uh, you know, Altuve was a tremendous um, development of their organization. They also went out and, and um, added to those core players by bringing in guys, uh, most notably, Justin Verlander, and that's the one thing that I think they were willing to do that the Pirates I don't think will ever do. They wouldn't bring in a guy with that kind of salary knowing that you have to pay him not just for the rest of this season but for the rest of his contract, Uh, and they were willing to do it, and I think you have to do that when you're close. Otherwise, there are too many things, and it's too random in baseball. Even if you're a really good team, even if you think you should win, doesn't mean you will win because in seven games, five-game series, 
things can change radically. The L.A. Dodgers over the last four years put in nearly $3 billion into their team. Um, and see, I still think that's a huge advantage even if you don't win a championship. And they didn't win a championship. They went to Game 7. But still, it's a huge advantage because every year you're going to have a much better chance than a lot of teams because you have the wherewithal to do it. And that's why I don't like the way baseball is run. And I haven't for many years, but they're going to continue to do it. That doesn't mean you can't have teams like Houston win, Cleveland, whatever. But you still, if you have $2.8 billion you're putting into your product over a four-year span, your chances should be uh, much better. And they were. Matt in Shaler. What's up, Matt? How you doing? Well, hey, Bob. I think Charlie Morton is a fraud. He never threw the ball 98 miles an hour in Pittsburgh. Every time he was struggling in Pittsburgh, if I had been Ray Searage, I'd have said, okay, throw it 99 miles an hour now. They won't be able to hit it. Every nickel he made in Pittsburgh, he should have to return it. He's a fraud. No, fraud. He's no, he had a lot of injuries, and that's what uh, held him back. He was on the Did he ever throw it 99 times. miles an hour? He used to have a 96, 97. Yes, he did. He had a very he threw, active he, he was 30 pitches deep that game, and he's still thrown at 97. Well, maybe he's injury free and he's been able to do what he had. Plus, he locates. He was in Pittsburgh for Look five at how plus he seasons. Locates, You're telling Matt. me he could never throw it 98? He threw it in the 90s. He was 95, 96. Absolutely. Never 98. I spent many That's nights two miles. watching Charlie Morton. It's a big difference. All right, but he's healthy and healthy makes a difference. He also redefined his own body, lost a lot of weight. Went into a completely different diet. He's a different person right now. Give him credit. Instead of calling him a fraud, I think he's overcome a lot of bad things that have happened to him. Well, in his prime, when he's 26, you know, 27, he's supposed to be at his best. But he had nine trips to the disabled list. That's what I'm telling you, Matt, and it's hard to overcome. So well, He wasn't injured the entire time he was yes, on he was. Pittsburgh. Yes, he was. You're telling me his entire Pittsburgh no, career? No, but I he said he, had, he had, was dealing with a lot of injuries all the way throughout his entire career. Oh. That's... So, anyway, I'd give him credit. He, he, he was a tremendous story, and I'm glad. He's a very nice person. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate that. 412-575-2600. Go to Sandy in Ohioville. Hi, Sandy. How you doing? Hi, Bob. Thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to call and answer my opinion on your question on what the Steelers need going yes. down the stretch. And what that I think they need is their offense when they're in the red zone needs to start scoring touchdowns. Yes, they're number 30 in the NFL in red zone touchdown production. That's 30. Think about that. Yeah, and I don't understand why when it's third and short yardage, one, two, three yards, they always want to throw to the end zone. Why don't they just get the first down? Then they have three more downs to try to get either another first down or a touchdown. It just it doesn't make any sense to me why I don't know if it's the play calling I don't know if it's the quarterback like I don't know it's who the, the problem execution. is but there's definitely well, a problem there. Listen, they're six and two despite these problems, and I think that's one of the areas that they definitely need to shore up. Thanks very much, Sandy, for appreciate that. Uh, the other is third down conversions just generally. They're 18th in the NFL. They need to do better. Uh, longer drives mean more trips to the red zone, which likely means more touchdowns. So one takes care of the other, but that's the biggest glaring needs on offense. We have uh, a lot of interesting Twitter reaction. Alex Key Keklak says, Eagles opponents so far 18 and 34. We'll be interested to see how they finish. That's a good point. Uh, Scott Moore says, the 2008 season came close to all Pennsylvania Super Bowl as well. That's true. Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to see Pittsburgh and Philadelphia get into that one. And one other from Christy Maleski, who says, why are the hockey announcers pronouncing Connor Sheary the wrong way? Frankie Valley song, Sherry. Hope they feel. Hope you feel better. Well, uh, it, it was Connor Sherry went his entire career without telling anyone that it was Sherry and not Sherry. So finally, it came out. So I'm glad that he corrected it. Takes a while to get used to it, however. Four one two five seven five twenty six hundred. Russ, Eric, and Phil will get to your calls next right here live on Pittsburgh CW.